welcome to Code Rush Feature of the Week. So, Mark, what do we got this week? Uh, Rory, this week I'm going to show you the Code Rush Setup Wizard. Okay. One assumes this is to do with first installing Code Rush and, and then sort of setting it up in its initial state ready for, for work. That's correct. Now, we did a video of this a while back, you and I did, uh, but uh, that was with an older UI, and we've changed the UI. It's a little bit cleaner. Uh, and so uh, we are going to reshoot the video or essentially do it again. And uh, you know, so if you've already seen the old, you've been through this, uh, you're probably good. And if you haven't, uh, welcome. And here we go. So okay. uh, so first page as it comes in. Well, actually, first of all, uh, the very first thing you need to know is from the Coderest menu, you want to choose Setup Wizard. That's the sure. way in. And I believe also on the first install, you get a, a message at the top of the uh, Wind Visual Studio window asking you if you want to just try to run the setup wizard. And yes. in general, if you're new to Coderish, I would definitely say yes to this. Um, and even if you're not, I find it uh, very useful on a brand new install on a brand new machine to go through and uh, very quickly get uh, uh, the settings I want to set. Uh, That's right. It is a very short procedure. It won't really cost you anything in the way of time, and it'll get you to a nice default position that you're comfortable working with very quickly. I think that's correct. And so first page, structural highlighting. It's these lines right here, which basically connect the beginning and ends of each of the braces. I have mm -hmm. that on right now. You can see in the background, you can see those lines in the background there. Sure. Um, I find they are useful in terms of seeing the pieces that are connected and also letting me know if I've got a, a, a syntax error where I'm missing some braces. So, also worth noting that the difference between what you see on screen in the screenshot and what you've got in the background, there is a tweak there. Um, there's obviously like a horizontal line that's in the screenshot, but you're, you've turned those off by the look of it because that suits your preferences more for the current time. Right. There, so there are... is further customization available beyond this. Yes, excellent point. Um, I can click the Learn More right here. Uh, it's opening this up in another window, but if I come over here and check it out, it's coming right up into the video that we recorded last time. Hey. Um, and where we, we talked more detail about each of uh, these individual pieces right mm -hmm. here. So um, I'm not sure where we're going to go to on the learn more, if we're going to still go to those videos or go back to this. My guess is they're probably going to go right to the video you're watching now. Um, wow, once, inception time. Yeah, it's a, little <laughs> bit, uh, it's a little bit recursive. Okay, let's click on next here, see the next page. Numeric keypad bindings. Okay. So if you've got a keyboard with a numeric keypad um, yep. I, and you don't use it while you're coding, I recommend these bindings. Um, they give you some commonly used features. The code refactor menu, use it all the time. That's the big fat key, the num zero. Jump to and jump to symbol are both here. So if you want to jump to a symbol, you hit the enter key. If you want to jump to maybe a symbol or something else, like a file, for example, you can hit uh, this dot key right here. And so you've got different jump to options right here. And then yep. also increase and decreasing the selection by logical blocks. Um, all of these are incredibly useful. Uh, I highly recommend these. Uh, if you cool. feel like that, you just click right there. Um, on the next page, the spell checker. Uh, I like this too. This thing has uh, caught some mistakes that otherwise I might not have seen, which uh, makes the code a little harder to read if it's not spelled correctly. So yeah. um, you've got some options. Well, it's very like IntelliSense, isn't it, at the end of the day? So IntelliSense will tell you when your code isn't going to compile correctly. And that way you don't have to think about some of those syntactical issues because they'll just be presented in front of you as you're called out to, so to speak. This is the same with the spelling. So it just lightens the load on the brain a little bit. That's right. And you have options to spell check in strings. And there are deeper options as well if you go into the CodeRush options dialog and search for spell checker to find the page. Cool. Um, tab to next reference. Again, highly recommended. It's a fast way to navigate through. If you're, for example, on the word my property here, you hit the tab key and you can jump right down to the next reference through and continue throughout your solution. Shift plus tab takes you backwards. So that's um, possibly my all time favorite feature. This I, I could not code without it. It certainly feels that way because navigating around a code base with this kind of facility is just so much simpler. So Mark says, do it, turn it on. Rory says, turn it on. Yeah. Here we go. Next page. The debug visualizer, uh, also a very cool tool. While you are debugging through code, it can uh, give you uh, values. For example, here shows you that in the check items with it, I, it turned on as I'm stepping through the code, it tells me what my count is for my list coming in mm -hmm. just by putting it underneath it. And then down here, it tells me that as I hit this line of code, 
before I execute the line of code, it tells me what the expression is going to be, that it will be false. It uh, de-emphasizes this line of code. It's a dead path. We're not going down that path, and yep. we are going to come down over here. So it's great feedback, explains what's happening. You can drill in. There's a lot of depth to this feature, and, and so I recommend this. Uh, yeah, I think it's a great feature too. It, it, I mean, it's another one of these that doesn't really interrupt your flow particularly. You can press additional keystrokes to sort of navigate in and break things down even further. But even just by turning it on and continuing to use the debugger in exactly the way you have before, you just get a wealth of extra information on the screen about what's going on. So it's just, just one of these generally helpful features. Yeah, agreed. All right, next. Uh, smart semicolon. Again, really powerful feature. Um, if you've got the caret here, uh, uh, before any kind of closing braces and you hit the semicolon, it'll just jump right out to the end of the line and finish the line. This is a C-sharp feature, but I use it all the time. Really, really recommend it. Yeah, it's a great feature. But particularly useful uh, where you've expanded a template where maybe it's left the carrot within a set of braces or maybe multiple sets of braces. So you fill out what's, what's sensible to be in there according to your own way of looking at things. But you don't find yourself at the end of the line. So this way it doesn't matter. You just hit the semicolon and it will take you out to the correct location yep. as if you had typed it all in sequence. That's right. And there are variations of this feature and how it works in different places. Um, you can take a look at, uh, you can click on the learn more and you can also Go, uh, go take a look at uh, the options page for Smart Semicolon um, and uh, take a look at what we've, what we've got out there. Uh, next, uh, one key selection embedding. So uh, I use this, I like it. Uh, it's up to you though, of course, if you want to use it or not. The idea is, is that if you want to embed the selection, the selected lines of code inside of a logical code block, you can have these one key selection embedding uh, shortcut bindings. So for example, if I select this uh, line of code and I hit the letter C, it'll give me a try catch around it. So it's a yeah. fast way to get blocks of code wrapped around what you have selected. You can build your own as well. If you've got something that you, that's very common uh, that you use all the time. Uh, so it's something potentially to look into if you uh, uh, do this kind of coding frequently. That's good, yeah. Uh, code template expansion. Uh, I do this. I This is what uh, I find gives me the fastest coding experience uh, from CodeRush. The CodeRush templates have been in development for uh, over a decade. I want to say about 14 oh, years. Yeah. And uh, they've been refined. And they, as a result, they're pretty easy to learn. And once you learn them, you can write code very, very quickly. Here's an example right here where uh, I type in PS for property of type string property string and I hit the space bar and it gives me all of that. And then I just type in the name of the property, hit enter and I'm done. And there are uh, loads of templates. You can combine the template rules like like combos in a in a game where you learn yep. one set of keystrokes and another and you combine them together, chaining together combos, that sort of thing. And um, as a result, you can you have access to something like uh, Last time we calculated probably about a half of a million different code generation templates, uh, all accessible from a, a handful of rules. That you... Worth knowing, of course, that despite being that many combinations, it, it, don't be daunted by that. Don't let that put you off in any way. Uh, it, a lot of the time, it's the same kind of keystrokes used in different scenarios that will give you the most appropriate expansion for that location. So although there's multiple end results, the ways of triggering it actually are not too hard to learn at all. Yeah, they're not. They're really not. And it's it's so much faster than typing all of this in by hand or by trying oh, so much or trying to find you some other uh, a technique to try to get this to generate this code the way you want it. Um, so you have sure. options to disable template expansion to enable it with the tab key. If you're new to template expansion, you might choose this. Um, if you are not, and or if your priority is the f the the most the fastest code, the most efficiently generated code with the fewest keystrokes on my side, on on your side. In other words, you being the developer, right? Uh, if you're concerned about RSI or carpal tunnel. Um, I would select uh, the last one here, enable templates with the space bar. Um, There's also uh, one other reason why you might pick one over the other. For example, if you're the kind of co or developer sorry, who um, tends to use very short variable names, maybe come from like quite a long line of developers where perhaps we didn't have 
uh, IDEs with so much memory, you know, all, all the capabilities we have now. So you got used to naming your variables with incredibly short mnemonics of its own. So you just picked literally letters, A, B, C, or P, S. Things like this are inherently in your code. If that's the case, then perhaps you pick the tab key so you avoid changing those right. kind of variables into template expansions uh, with the space bar, which you would otherwise be normally following those variables with. Right, for example... On the other hand, if you use oh. much longer variables initialize component there, property name, your proper English expansion almost, then you'd probably be okay with Spacebar since it's unlikely that you would accidentally trigger this function when you didn't want to. Yeah, excellent point. And just to reiterate, it's 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 there are collision possibilities. So if I had a class out here declared as PS, a lowercase p and a lowercase s, I had a class name or a type declared as that, and I type this in here, I would get the template expansion instead of the reference to that type. And so if you have incredibly short class names, like I say, the likelihood of collision is low. Um, if I had a class called PS, I would probably consider renaming that uh, for readability, right? Um, yes. so, so this is the other cool thing too. A lot of times developers use short variable names because they don't want to type in so long because it takes so long to write the code, right? That's right. Yeah, and so, but the cool thing is, is if you switch over to templates, you can use long descriptive variable names, easier to read function names, and still gain the benefits of very quick code generation. Absolutely. Okay, next, markers. Markers are a way of uh, dropping uh, like breadcrumbs through the code and then following uh, the way back. You can uh, drop specific breadcrumbs in specific locations and, uh, and then collect them by pressing Alt, End, or Escape. You can choose the shortcut right here. Uh, and, uh, and then there's this last op option here that says use markers and collect with escape even when there's a selection. Um, this option was added because Visual Studio across the years added a feature that said, hey, if you hit escape while there's a selection, collapse the selection. And what we're doing instead is if you've got a marker out there, we're not only going to collapse the selection, but we're going to get out and jump to that marker. If you press escape, that's if you select this last option right here. Um, yeah, it's... So what it boils down to is the choice between those last two is, do you want to have to hit escape twice for every collection or do you want to have to only hit it once? Right. If you only want to have to hit it once, that last option's for you. If there's a selection, yeah. Other, a selection, otherwise, yes. you're going to have to hit it twice to, to collect and jump. Um, and you can also choose Alt-End if you want to. Um, I, like, I use markers pretty frequently. There's some cool things you can do, including jumping back and forth between two different locations as you're kind of editing in two different locations in the code. Um, we've yep. got Feature of the Week videos on this, uh, so you can learn more about markers. Uh, click that button there if you want to see more. Okay, IntelliRush. Uh, so IntelliRush is a wrapper around Visual Studio's IntelliSense that includes filtering abilities, including the ability to jump into the hierarchy. So you can actually filter by hierarchy. If you know that you're looking for something, for example, uh, uh, a function, a method in form or its ancestors or in control and its ancestors, you can, yeah. you can take a slice of either looking only in control by hitting the number four when this is up or yep. holding uh, a shift plus four to include all the ancestors, uh, control at, and all the way up to object or nice. control plus that number to include the descendants, control down to form. So you, sure. you can slice and dice. You can also uh, filter by methods, properties, events, fields, um, that sort of thing. So that's IntelliRush. Mm -hmm. Up to you if you want to enable or not. Um, I have it disabled. Usually I have it enabled, but uh, sometimes I have it disabled for because I'm comparing back and forth between uh, what's built into Visual Studio and what, and what we ship. Uh, and then that's it. We get to the final settings page, and uh, it gives nice you a little summary there. Yeah, it gives you a summary, and you click finish, and you're done. And the cool thing is you can come back in and run it. It remembers your settings, right? And you yep. can also make changes in the options pages by bringing up the Code Rush options dialog and then come back. It'll remember those changes as well. So quite a number of those options also have, if you look just towards the center of the toolbar at the top there, there's a whole range of toggle switches um, just on the, on the actual toolbar itself behind the menu. Oh, right um, here. Many of which refer to things that have been in fact turned on and off there. So there's, basically you're never locked into your decision, right? You can just go back, run through the wizard again, or go into options, find a bit more, you know, fine tuning that you'd like to do. Um, I personally would suggest go through it, turn most of the things on, and then see how it, how it sits with you. It's after all only one menu away. You can get straight back in there, turn it off, uh, or maybe just alter the way it works. And uh, at least that way you'll be have a, a kind of an idea of how the features fit together, how they, what they can do for you, as it were. Excellent. Thanks, Mark. We'll see you next week on Code Rush Feature of the Week.
For more Feature of the Week videos, click one of the two video links on screen, or select from our playlist. Download and learn more about Code Rush from the DevExpress website, and be sure to subscribe to our channel to receive all the latest Code Rush feature videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.